Okay, so um, it is February 13th, 2023, and this is the Elected Officials Compensation Advisory Board meeting starting at 5.30 on the day before Valentine's Day when all the rest of us should be going out and getting candies and wine and whatnot. I am letting in someone else. Okay, so uh, for tonight's agenda, the first thing we do is we have a... Um, we're calling a meeting to order, so we're going to have a roll call. Um, and so it looks like, Sam, can you make note of everybody that's here? I can. Do you want me to go through the roll call? Yeah, let's make it official, please. All right. John Bidwell. Present. Tara Brewster. I see the thumbs Tara. up. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Felicia Corbiel. Present. Deborah Henson. Hello. Hi. I am here. Um, Sam Hopper is present. Javier Luengo Garrido. Here. And Peter Whalen. Here. Excellent. Okay. All right. Well, before we go further, I just want to remind everybody that this is being video recorded and audio recorded. I think the first thing we want to do is welcome Deborah or Deb. Do you which which name do you go by? I go by Deb. Okay. Um, thank you, Deb, for joining our group. We really appreciate it, rounding it out to seven, which is what it needed to be. We're very happy. And then as a backup, apparently, Peter has a cat. So I don't know if that's an official member of the team or not, but um, we certainly appreciate all the input we can get. He's very smart. He's very smart. That helps. <laughs> that definitely helps me. Okay. Um, any public comment? It doesn't look like we have anybody here other than who's on the committee. Okay, I'm gonna say there's no public comment tonight. So we need to, uh, we need approval of the minutes uh, from last, uh, from, I guess it's three weeks ago now, we've had a couple of, of uh, scheduled changes. Um, and any, uh, any issues with that? Okay. And um, the the consent agenda. Do we need to vote on the? I'm trying. I forget which we have to vote on the consent agenda or not. Or is it just consent and we're good to go? You just go straight into the agenda. Consent agenda. We're good to go. All right. Um, okay. We have the minutes. Um, we have to do a roll call for yes, the minutes. Yes. Exactly. I so, move a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. okay anyone? Second. Thank you. All right, Sam, you want to do a, a roll call? I will. John? Yay. Tara? Yay. Felicia? Yes. Deb? Oh, yet. I don't think I can vote yet because I'm not officially assigned, but I would vote yes. <laughs> I, I, I would, I'm not I really would, officially I, in. I, I would say if you read the minutes and you look good for you, that's good enough. That's fine, yeah. Sam votes yes, Javier? Yep. And Peter? Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> um, on to the discussion items. So we have uh, the assignments that we've all been working on before we covered um, a lot of what Sam had, um, at the last meeting, what Sam had covered. Um, one of the things that uh, we really want to get to, too, is we have the online survey, the working discussion, and that was done with Felicia and Tara. And what, what I can do is when we're discussing that, if it's helpful, I can share that, uh, that window with everybody as we go through that. Um, so does that, look, does that sound good to everybody? Great. Um, all right, updates regarding information um, and the gathering plan. Sam, is there anything that you want to, is there anything you're ready to add? And I mean, you, you certainly gave us a lot before. Is there any updates on that? Uh, the only update I have is I went back to the city's HR to see if they could provide per capita income and some other data points, and they weren't able to. Um, they said that they presume that came from the Census Bureau. So mm -hmm. that, that's all I got. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Okay. Um, all right. Any, yes, Javier. 
Um, so I have some reporting to do in relation to surrounding communities uh, compensation with city council and, and conversation specifically with those city councils. Do you want me to do it now or should I do it later? Um, if you're prepared to do it now, I don't know how long it's going to take. If it's going to take a long time, it'd be great just to give us a synopsis and then share some information. Yeah, or so I have cover. my cell phone here with the notes. So, um, so the summary is that everybody's underpaid and everybody feels that they are they, they, what they are getting as compensation is way, way below of what they should be able to be doing to be able to do sort of a, a, an impactful work. As a, as a, as a bit of, piece of an example, I want to talk a little bit about a Springfield, uh, $2,000 a year. And that's uh, without, without uh, benefits, and that's before taxes. <laughs> it's it's pretty bad um and and you know that it doesn't get better when we start talking about northampton in in fact with northampton it gets even worse and that's sort of a longer reporting that i can do and i can uh, or maybe we can leave it for next meeting because I, it's, it's it's long but um generally without all these elected officials without having any connection between them besides being city councils in their own towns and cities the common denominator was that and the question that how how many hours do you would actually need to be able to do impactful work or just work to be able to read every single agenda with every single uh document that comes with the agenda to be able to in season but in budget season to be able to you know to actually understand the budget you are going to be voting and they were talking around 30 hours, which is way, way below of what they are doing right now. Um, but John, if you want, I can write sort of a memo and send it after this meeting. That would be fantastic. Yeah, we really, it, it, the, it seems the picture you're painting is, is one that we've heard from others um, to various degrees. Is that sort of fair for the region? Uh, abs absolutely. Uh, the one thing aside, I want to say that I talk uh, with one of the consulars that I talk, I talk with various with a, a series of consul consulars in Northampton, um, and every one of them, including Rachel Mayuri, said she's looking forward to being invited to the meeting to, to talk to us about, and answer any questions that we may have had. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that's certainly something that we've talked about. So we should talk about the timing of when we want to have people, who would be invited. Um, I don't think we, you know, and how open it is. Um, so I guess my question to the group right now is, do we have that discussion now? We also have the survey and the survey also would get at some of that information. Um, so, the, and the survey would certainly be going out to a, a broader number of people. Um, so does anyone have any suggestions on whether we want to talk about that now? or whether we want to wait till after the we discuss the survey? Either way, I, uh, either way it's fine with me. Okay. Tara I would, has her hand up. Mm. Oh, thank you, I didn't see that. I'd like to discuss the survey. Okay. Then we are going to discuss this. We'll move on to discussing the survey. Um, and then do we need if is it considered a change of agenda if we go back at that point or or the fact of who we're going to be who we would invite to this is an extension of the conversation with the survey is that work for people. I would say that that falls in next steps. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, any any other information from the group to share that's new before we move on to the online working to the survey discussion. Okay. Um, again, does everybody have access to that, or would you prefer that I share this uh, on screen? What's helpful for people? Will you share it? Yes. Please. Yep. Okay. All right. Everybody can see this? Yes. Great. Yes. All right. Um, so we'll start at the top. Um, and then um, give feedback as we go as we go through this. There may be questions that crop up as we go along, and you may have some at the end. 
Okay, so this is the elected officials questionnaire. Is there anything that needs to go at the top here? Do we need to identify it as Northampton? Do we want to identify any kind of identity at the top in terms of who's um, who's talking? Who, you know where this is coming from and all that, Javier. Two things. Are we doing the having to do this with a Gmail account required or not? Okay, because it's still required. And the so, other and the other is, I mean, yeah, I do think that they should be a description of the charge of the of the of the advisory board and an explanation that. If you if you if you want to remain anonymous, be, think about the identifiers that you are going to be using because you know this is it's as soon as this is submitted, becomes uh, subject to bullet record. I think that's really important sort of to clarify. Okay, so uh, I I think that's a really good point in terms of identifying who's on this. If you you'll notice that when I signed up for this or, or, or when it was sent to me, it automatically has an identifier on it. Um, so is there a way, Felicia or Tara, that we can set it up so that it's non-identifiable? So I know it kind of looks like it goes back to you, but that's just linked to your particular Gmail account. So you can see that, but it's, you see how it says not shared? So yeah. like if anybody, if anyone wants to do it as an example, just so I can show you, um, it comes back and it doesn't show anybody's account. So it'll just say like data from like a, like a user. It doesn't, it doesn't give an email account no matter who does it. Um, it doesn't trace back to anybody. So I, I understand it shows it right there and it makes it look like it identifies it to you, but it doesn't. So I think something in the description right there stating that it, you know, like that's just how Google Forms work, that this doesn't get traced back to you, um, whether you're logged in with Gmail or not logged in with Gmail. I think that's probably just a good point to add just so people realize that. Okay, that makes sense. Some kind of descriptor in there, then again, that that mentions that even though it shows up for the viewer and the person who's participating, it does not mean that that is going to be identifiable to who's gathering the information. Mm -hmm. When I downloaded it, I'm looking at, and I actually printed it because I wanted to make a lot of notes. Uh, mine says my my email address. So. Yeah, I think that's because it's the email address that like. You, when you click on it, it it went to that email address. You know what yep. I mean. So it, yes. it somehow links it. But um, from from my time of teaching, I can definitely confirm it does not give anybody's uh, email or name unless uh, you ask it. Um, so so it just won't to clarify, back. just to clarify, then it showed up for Peter because Peter printed out what he's looking at here. He was not actually printing out something that was submitted, which would then I not have an identifier with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's something like that. I, I'm not really sure, like I don't know the ins and outs of Google, <laughs> um, but I do know that if anybody actually submits this, it doesn't show their email. Okay. It doesn't show the email in any way that it went to. It doesn't say like, oh, this email, submitted this information, nothing like that. Okay, great. Sam? I think Deb might have had her hand up before me. Oh, thank you, Deb. I didn't see that. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know, I mean, I'm coming in kind of new to this. Who is this actually going to, Felicia, that, you, that we could just test? I mean, because Peter sent one. Who's receiving it? Doesn't that come back to us? So it would come back. So if anybody actually went through, um, I think the way that I sent it was just the ability to review, not the ability to actually submit information, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but basically what happens is it gets sent to emails and then the people click the email and then it just, it just comes back. So we planned on sending this to all of the elected officials in Northampton, both current and past. And then um, these questions would be answered anonymously. And then towards the bottom, there's a spot about if, if they're willing to um, meet with us, then at that point, they can provide their information to us. 
but my question still is who is it coming back to when it's submitted? Oh, I'm sorry. It, it would go back to my account just because it's my Gmail account. Um, and then, then you can download the data off of it. Uh, okay. So basically the way it would show is it would show each question and then it would show the answers submitted for each question. And so at that point, obviously I could share it with the entire group. Right. Yeah. But so if Peter, if, if any one of us went through the whole thing and hit submit, it would go to you and you have already known that it would not show their name. I just think this might be an issue for people that we ought to be really clear about it. And, and it's confusing because it comes to the person when you submit it, it, it would have my name and my email address, or well, my email address, which is my name. So I think we somehow should have something stated within that, you know, really clearly that this is an anonymous survey and that it only shows to the sender. And which I wish it, I wish there was some way we could undo that because why do we have to have, is there a way to not have the confusion? Does it have to have the sender's email? Or is, that um, Google, is that just Google Forms protocol? I, we can't do anything with it. I think that's just Google Forms. Um, I know that there's other like uh, survey formats out there. I know a lot of times you have to pay or have like, you know, or register for like a free trial and stuff like that. But I mean, that is another option. Like I know there's job form, which is another option. So I think. Um, you know, even just going through and like kind of figuring out the questions now would be really good. And then if we don't like the format of Google Forms, I can definitely look and see if there's another format that we could use. But I also think that Google Forms is one of those things that people in general are usually pretty familiar with. Familiar with yeah. yeah. So I also don't want to cheat to use like a totally random platform and then have nobody know how to use it or respond to it. I also think in the email that we send to people when we, you know, in send out this questionnaire, we also emphasize all of those points within the email. So not just necessarily the form description, but also it would be part of an email. I mean, we wouldn't just send out a blank, like follow this URL to people. So mm -hmm. great. Javier? Javier, you had a question? Yes, but Sam. Thank you, sorry. I was just gonna say that, so where it says the name, the only way you can change that is by going in the settings and it's still gonna say the email, it's just not gonna say not shared. So like there's a setting that says collect emails and right now it must be off because it says not shared. If you turn it on, then the not shared goes away. So my suggestion was to um, ask Javier, or I mean, even I have the language from the survey that went out to people who've served on, um, Javier, I'm sorry, I can't think of the, the barriers to serving on select committees, is that it? Thank you. Their survey had really good language about, um, you know, the identifiers to keep in mind what identifiers you might be disclosing if you wanna remain anonymous. And then also just adding, something that says, please note it, even though it may display your Gmail above, um, as long as it says not shared in parentheses, we have no visibility of it and you will remain anonymous. So we could just put disclaimers both in the description of the form and then also in the email that goes out to people. That's an excellent suggestion. Javier? Yeah, so, so yeah, I was gonna talk about redundancy. Of, of this disclaimer, disclaimer, that's it. And the other, um, in, if you want at some point I can share, we're, we we are using uh, a platform called Qualtrics for the select committee on something, something barriers to serve in city committees and boards. And so we're using Qualtrics and, and as Felicia said, I was worried about, oh shit, this is not, Google said, which people are really familiar with. So I was fearful about it. We have gotten 115 answers to that uh, survey. That's Can you spell that app, please? So we have it. Uh, do you want me to share my screen so you can see sort of a, a, a little bit about the language that Sam was talking about? All right, I'm gonna stop my share and I'm gonna have you share.
Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, you need to you need to go to uh, and and change the setting down. Yep. Um, okay. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Have you got it? Good. Yeah. So, so this is this is the sort of the language that we use at the beginning, right? Uh, the charge. How long is it going to take the phone? So people know more or less how much time they're going to have to invest. Uh, the contact point, which would be you, Peter, and John, and what Sam was talking about, which is the important privacy notice about you know this is as anonymous as you want, and it comes down how you use the narrative section of it, right? And uh, as you can see here, uh, well, anyway, so we have got in 115, and um, what I like about this is that we got uh, we can get uh, this sort of a uh, uh, where is it uh, results yes this one um, we get these fancy graphics mm. right with percentages uh, how do you find out about about the vacancy and you you can see the graph you can you, there is a full report that this is going to be attached. To our final recommendations. So that's it's uh, Qualtrics, Q U A L T R I C S, Qualtrics. Um, that's an option, and I can I can share the language about the privacy notice, the language that we use for the for the header of this. Great. Um, please do that. Any question? Javier, uh, yes, did you please. have to? Did you have to pay for that? Like, was there any type of fee associated with it? Nope. I would. I'm so cheap. I'm. Not, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't pay. Wow. Okay. I'll remember that about you. <laughs> um, okay. That's excellent. Um, all right. We'll continue on with the questionnaire. So we've talked about the introduction. Um, that's fantastic. Now we're getting down into the questions. Um, first, um, question. yes, is there? Sorry, I wanted to say one more thing. Um, if you scroll up to the top, yes, should we say anything about who we are, um, the members of the committee, the purpose? Um, I think, yes, having some kind of introduction is going to be helpful. Some people who receive this may know about our charge and others may not. So um, I think that including something at the top here and especially in the introductory email to me would make sense. How do yeah. others feel? The email. Email, okay. I think both. Like basically everything that we put in the email, we could probably put right here. I Again, more for that like consistency, that repetitive, like it's in their face. It's kind of right there. Yeah. I think both too. I think putting it right up at the top, the the name of the group, our group, and then if you want to list the names, I think Tara, that's a good idea too. But I do think it should be at the top where it's coming from. Okay. Um, all right, excellent. Tara, anything else at the beginning you wanted to touch base on before we get into the questions? Nope, sounds good. Okay. Can I just, yeah. can I review for the minutes to make sure I have, I captured what everyone said? Yes. So please, including yeah. in the description, we should have an introduction with the board's charge, approximately how much time the survey will take, contact information, which would be John and or Peter, um, privacy notice language. And I just copied and pasted what was used and what Javier shared. So I'll, it'll be in the minutes. Um, and then also just the general suggestion, <clears throat> excuse me, that everything included in the description of the survey should be included again in the email that goes out. Am I missing anything? Peter? I, I just would like to, like with all the surveys that I fill out that they say it's gonna take five minutes and it takes 15 or 20, would you please put five minutes on this one too? <laughs> or you mean whatever it actually no, no, is no need to be accurate we don't want to lose them from the beginning so i would say five minutes approx <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just 
just like Javier is going to pay for our coffee approximately. <laughs> okay. I, in, when we're talking about coffee, I'm not cheap. I, 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 I I'm, I'm sort of, with coffee, I can say that I'm more than fancy. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sam, Sam, please, please note that, will you? Okay. Thanks. All right. Are we ready to tackle the questions? Excellent. First question. What elected position did you hold for the city of Northampton? Uh, this is only, I just want to clarify, this is only going out to people who held positions, so past tense is appropriate? That's a really leading question. In, in I'm, terms I'm of- just, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. I it's thought you meant like people- It's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Okay. Well, could we put did or do? I'm yeah. thinking that too. Yeah, if it's going out to people who are currently in a position, then it should be either. It did should be both. Yeah. Okay. How long did you hold the elected position? So I think with that one, probably the same thing. We want to make sure it's inclusive to people who might currently have the position. How long did you or have you? How long did you hold or have you held the elected position? What's I'm curious, what's Sam, you have a question? I would just also like add in parentheses, what, like, are we asking them terms, months, years, et cetera, right? That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And what's the, I'm curious, what's the purpose of this question? Um, when I came up with it, I guess I was thinking like, if somebody had only been in the position, say three weeks, not that their input is not as valuable, but are they really going to have as much to say as somebody who may have held a position for like five years? Mm. Thought it was just more so good for like a baseline of who they potentially were since we're not having the, um, since they wouldn't have their name attached to this. Okay. I'm fine with it. How do others feel? Everybody good? Okay. Did the pay benefits have an impact on your decision to run for the elected position? Maybe we could say positive or negative because some people might have <laughs> been negatively impacted by the amount of uh, the benefits and some people might have said like there was a positive. I mean, well, can, can we just leave it the way it is and just say, please explain. I, I would say that I agree with Tara and I would, I would have a yes or no about positive or not positive. And the next one, please, you know. So um, do go. Feel free to. Uh, okay. So adding wording, approximating what Tara had suggested, and then as Peter had suggested, um, having a place for an explanation if people feel that they want to provide that. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now I'm gonna. I'm I'm curious. That particular question is interesting to me because we're only asking people who actually held an elected position. What about is it? And I don't know if it's possible to find what I would call tire kickers, people who might have considered running for an elected position and chose not to because of the pay or benefits. But I, I'm not sure necessarily how we would even get a list like that. And any ideas? Is that just too impossible a request to try to? That, that, that's a hard one because so many people, you know, they, they, they didn't go, we didn't even know they were contemplating it. They might've just uh, rejected the concept, the idea because it was just wasn't enough for what they were uh, being asked to do. And they just sort of put it out of their minds. Okay. That's... Sam? 
I was gonna say, if we really do wanna gather that, we could just send it out publicly, like ask the city to put it on their Facebook and ask folks to post it on listservs and whatnot. But I, I mean, yeah, there's not necessarily a list. Yeah, no. Um, what are feelings about making this public? I feel like that's a big can of worms. Me too. Okay. <laughs> Javier? I, I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> I mean, but the reality is that would, that would be two different service for starters. Yeah, yeah that's I, a good that, point. That would be two different service. And what I, what I om omitted, what, how, the way how we did the survey for our committee was it's branching. So if you, so there is a, no, if, there is a no, just start choosing if you are if you are or were a chair of vice chair, a regular committee member or somebody who tried to get in a committee but wasn't successful. So you choose that and the next steps branch you out depending on what you choose to get you to specific questions because you know your uh, the chair has way more responsibility. So there are questions that you're asking the chair that you're not asking to the regular member or you're not asking to somebody who applied and who had never gotten the call, right? Mm -hmm. um that's uh, that's an option if not uh, i like the idea to send it out um i mean uh, we have to be honest with ourselves the people serve the, the vast majority of the people serving in the past and now are people with a shit ton of privilege and money and and, and disposable time and that has been the denominator for somebody to run mm -hmm. So I would love to see John's, John's sort of idea to try to get that in some way. I do agree though, <laughs> so kind of warms, but you know. Um, I, yeah. I, I also think that it, it could be interesting to put it out to the whole public and kind of ask them how they feel about serving and like what they think. But it, I think it would almost need to be kind of like Javier said, like almost like a totally separate survey because we can't ask them like, oh, explain positive or negative impacts on why you chose to run when that might not quite be the case. And it would have to be more about like the barriers that they're overcoming to be able to run would be kind of more of like the the flow of the survey I think I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea I think it could give us really interesting data I don't know how much it would help us um in the long run because of that can of worms that it opens I mean you're going to have people saying they want ridiculous amounts of money or benefits what about adding a question um to the effect of do you know anyone that either chose not to run or dropped out or didn't you know stopped stopped considering it because of pay or benefits you know i feel like a lot of these people that might be taking the survey will also have been having side conversations with other people who might have been interested in running mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. Sam, you, were, you put up your hand and then opted to <laughs> rest your <laughs> finger on your nose. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could so observant. <laughs> so observant, John. Oh, uh, I mean, this can, I, we can perhaps discuss this in the next steps because I had an idea for like next steps post survey on how to get feedback. So okay, so that's a good idea. Maybe we stick with this survey for now, and we've already discussed the other one enough to say, well, that might be a separate one. So we'll 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 revisit that after the fact. It, yeah, I think it's a great idea. And Javier's putting a thumbs up, so we're good. Um, all right, next question: What job career did you have while holding the elected position, if any? Yes, Sam. I have a, I'm curious what people think about this, because when you say what job or career, you're obviously talking about something compensated, but as we know, people do uncompensated work, most often time women. Um, so I'm just curious if we want to solicit that information or if that's not what we're looking for. For example, like what compensation would we ask um, a stay at home parent 
like what's enough to get them to go into an elected official position and would they be able to enter that here like what job did I have while well, I'm a parent right does that count um if it does count we might want to rephrase it or if that's not what we're looking for then uh, that's it so this is interesting wasn't narc with stay home dad I think so I think so right I mean I, you know it was just I don't know what I did last week, but I think Narkowitz was a stay-at-home dad. His <laughs> wife is a doctor. Um, In addition to being mayor. Right, and, and, yeah. he, and he run. But I do see, again, I do see value in this question from the point of view of having disposable income, the disposable amount of time has been the common denominator. Mm -hmm. So if, if we're getting all these people in on, you know, that either they are having, you know, they have all the time of the world because, you know, they either have a trust fund or they have some something else or attorneys or that, that already have a career so they can just, you know, leave up that. I would like to know because that is going to affect how we see the, the sort of the kind of person that is serving and who is able to make it versus people that are not able to make it. I do agree that maybe we need to expand the question of phrasing in a different way for people such as a stay home dad, a stay home mother. So could it be like what job or res or major responsibility have you had? Something where it, it, it gets beyond a salaried position or a waged position? Could it? Could there be some parenthetical, you know, compensated or uncompensated work? You financial, could do yeah, finance, you know. So if we're saying what job or career, and then at some point, if any, compensated or we have one parenthetical, compensated or uncompensated. I mean, if it's somebody that's, and then you could have, yeah, I mean, I think. Per, do we have to say personal or professional? I mean, do we have to distinguish that? And then I kind of hate to use the word professional. So personal or or paid or unpaid. Paid or unpaid. Just I think that's the simplest thing to say. Would you would, would you feel that if we say job, career, and oh fudge, um, occupation? <laughs> yeah, job, career, or. Occupation could a uh, stay home mother, stay home father is an occupation. Yeah, I like that. So you, because, could because you just it. say occupation for everything? Yeah. I yeah. Okay. What I was thinking, what type of occupation in parentheses compensated or uncompensated did you have while holding the selected position? There you are. I like that. Yeah. Would it be worth adding examples? Or do you think that's too leading? I don't want to make it too long. <laughs> you got to keep it to that five minutes, you know? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I think anything we can do to keep this short, I agree with that. Well, okay. John okay. said paid or unpaid. So if we want to shorten the language rather than compensated and uncompensated, we should say paid and unpaid. But either one's fine with me. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, can we go to the next question? We should probably, we've got uh, 17 minutes. I just want to give everybody, I mean, we can always go a little over, but I just want to make sure that we're aware of time. Um, why did you end your elected position? If so, oh. If so? Because uh, again, if we're oh, right, right. That's existing true. people, yeah. That's true, if so. I mean, that's right, because that would only apply to people in the past. Good point. All right. What's the asterisk for? Required. They all have that. Yeah, anything that's well, required. Oh, I see. They all have it. Okay. Well, not all of them, I guess. Yeah. Okay. But no, the ones that do are required. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready for the next question? Did you feel the compensation was fair for the amount of work you did? Are we talking about the elected? official work as opposed because we just came from a question didn't we that was talking about other work yeah but that one's just addressing what you're doing outside of what you're doing um on as an elected official um although it's this it's anyone's work for the city. as an elected official that's correct yeah 
well, during your tenure as an elected official, the blah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. But sure, yeah, could, that, that can lead repeat, to You could repeat that for sure, just mm -hmm. to make sure it's clear. It's clear. Okay. Did you have any challenges attending required meetings? But just again, the, the, the past and present did or do you? Oh, right. Or have you? Right. We just okay. have whoever's redoing all these questions based on these comments just has to always keep that forefront. Thank you. And can um, we combine those two questions? I mean, it seems like we really could combine them and just say, please explain. Because it's the same thing. You mean the one below that? Yeah, these two questions. If you did you have any challenge? And if so, please explain. And that's just one question. Yeah. You know, otherwise, it's just a yes, no, and then an explanation in the next question. Just would shorten it. I, I agree with that. I, I, go ahead, Javier. I would say that I prefer that separated. So the reason the yes or no the yes or no answers are gonna give are gonna give the Google format give you numbers. Oh. So if you keep it, did you have yes or not? And you, but rather than make it a narrative, because the next question is narrative linked to that one, I will prefer to do the first one yes or no. So after that, when you run it uh, with with uh, analysis. You get those ans those binary answers uh, yeah. counted immediately. So Javier, mm -hmm. to that point, should that be a pull down answer? Should that be yes or no on some of either the either either way works? Yeah. Okay. I'm editing this like on the side as we're talking about it. Um, more so like about like the the do and dids, and um, so I added it so that one's a checkbox. So they check off yes or no, and then if yes, they have to explain. If they check no, then they don't explain. So that's why that second part isn't doesn't have the asterisk because it's not required. So if they check yes, then and I guess we have no further information to gather from them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. 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 Anything else on that? Uh, okay. So we talk. We address those two questions, right? So can we move on to, would you be interested in serving as an elected official again? Now, is this another one that should also be a radial yes, no, and with an explanation, just like the previous? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and then, the sec this question, would you be interested in attending a meeting 30 to 60 minutes with a member of the elected officials compensation board to discuss your elected position and its compensation in more detail? And this is gonna be separate or in lieu of inviting people to a meeting, one of our present meetings, or one of these. I think it should be invited to a meeting. With all of this. So, Peter, that are, are you saying this this question would be they would be invited as a group, or would we keep? Would there be? I guess would there be both or just one? Like maybe it depends on how many people respond, yeah. right? That's right. what I would depends. Um, uh, that you go you first. Uh, I was also going to say. Like we meet on Mondays at from 5.30 to 6.30 for somebody who's interested in meeting with us, that type might not work for them. So we might not be able to have it be like a full meeting with them at say like nine o'clock on a Friday. Okay, Deb, Deborah. You can call me Deb. Um, I just think that people might be a little bit more open about compensation matters. Some people might prefer to do that just kind of one-to-one -one rather than in a group, but that's just my, my thinking. We could invite them to a group, but I think some people might not feel as comfortable and they might prefer meeting separately. Well, we could do both then. We could invite them to a meeting and say, would you rather meet individual? Yeah. So, yeah. The, the, so the, the complication with the, this question is what happened? Well, first of all, if this is if if I want to use um, 
a specific information, not caring if people know who I am, that's no problem for me to say, get back to me because I would like to talk to you, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm not using identifiers, if I'm not willing to give away a specific information, but I, I may feel comfortable to having an off-the-record conversation with a member, that gets more complicated, right? So I think that I think what I'm saying is that the option of a one-to-one, -one, I think it's the first tier, and in the, that one-to-one, -one, the person talking to the member says, you know, I would be willing to come to talk to you guys. Super good. I because I see value to having a one-to-one -one with the member sort of bringing up to speed in the conversation that we have had. So by the time that the, elect, the elected or formerly elected official comes here and ups, come, ups into coming here, they would know what they are getting into if they're, you know, if they decide to come. Okay. So that oh. basically, I'm sorry, Tara, is that you? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. So if we have a conversation with someone outside of this meeting, it's not recorded or public record but if they come to a meeting with all of us then it is yeah because it's gonna it's being recorded yeah and i mean you can so elected officials they do it every time right i mean the amount of times that I, I have talked to jim nash about my street being the moon with so many craters uh, and we have conversation about that and that's not violation of a meeting law it's just jim getting sort of feedback from the community how many of us can be in a separate meeting having a talk with someone before it violates that? Like, could we go in pairs to the preliminary meeting with folks? I would think so, because that's not a quorum. That's yeah. right. All right. I think Peter, Peter, you had your hand up? I took it down. I, I thought you were going in a different direction with your question. Okay. Okay, so uh, is the consensus at this point, then we're going to leave this question and this becomes maybe this is also next steps, inviting people to speak to us is a separate item from this. Or we can add at the beginning that if you're interested to come and give testimony to the to the to the regular meeting, contact the chair and the vice chair. Oh, so that would be a, a question following this one is what you're well, saying. We can, we can put it at the beginning. If you feel more comfortable than you know, that coming in talking to the committee, you feel free to do it. And at the end, we can add the one-to-one. -one. Or we could put it, we can also like, like you said, get rid of this question altogether and then um, put it in the email that we send out. So like in the email, say, you know, if you're interested uh, in discussing with this further, please reply yeah. to the email or something. I like that because it keeps the questionnaire shorter. Yeah. Which means we might, it might actually be five minutes. Yeah. And would you, Felicia, in your idea, would you put the option of the individual or, you know, meet with a couple of us or in a group? Would you put both options and then they could let us know? Yeah, I think it'd be one of those things where in the email, we should keep it brief. Like if you are interested in, discussing this further, please reply to this email, something along that lines. And then once the person actually replies, then kind of give them those options. I don't want to like offer it out before, before we even have anybody. I don't want to overwhelm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. sorry. Who was speaking? I, I don't see everybody on my screen at once. So it's, I sometimes miss people. It's Tara. Tara. Hi. Um, are we listing who the committee members are for people somewhere or are we staying anonymous? I think, I thought we were going to do that in the introductory email. Or, or at the top of the doc of the survey. I thought we, you had said list the name of the group and the members at the top. The esteemed members, I might want to add. <laughs> okay. Yes, Javier? Um, I know that we have talked a lot about keeping it short. I do would like to add short. at the end uh, gender, uh, income range, uh, award, 
where they live mm -hmm. and if they have dependents. Oh, as, as, a, as a general survey, I think that would that would help us because you know somebody who says, "Oh, I don't need to have any problem." No, it's a, it's a doctor making two hundred thousand dollars a year, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, of course, right. Yeah. So I think that that would be sort of general demographic information yeah. would help us a lot. Or an age too, an age range. Yes. yes, I agree. Age, I, that was my next question. Is, is there anything else that would be added to the demographic information that we'd want? I don't want to go overboard on this, but um, if there's any other particular demographics that we're after. I'd like, like to add race or ethnicity. Okay. Anything else? I think when um, in adding those questions, I think those questions make sense, but uh, I think it also is good to put like, a, I prefer not to answer this question too, because I don't want to deter people uh, just because they have to put their, their gender or their income or whatever. So um, I, I will also add that as like an option that they prefer not to answer that question. I think that's a good idea. So Sam, if you remember our survey had that section and every single part has like refer not to say, right? And, and also, you know, dependence, including marital status. I mean, people can up into, you know, disclosing or not. But, you know, in a town with all the love that I have for Northampton, in a town where it doesn't matter if you're a millionaire or not, people want to look middle class. So I think it's important to, <laughs> to uh to see that because i think that's one of the, the money money is always the first barrier for for this kind of stuff okay then um felicia you you've got that access to that information that he that javier was just talking about the demographic information that you'd need um so you, so you want me to send you what i have in our survey yeah, if you could, that would be really helpful just to have another template to kind of replicate. Okay, I will share all that section with you and you can take whatever works better. Thank you. Uh, yes, Sam. Um, I, I also don't want to make it very long, but I also would like to ask folks how much time they're putting in or put in to their position and if they feel that's sufficient. I just, to me, that seems really important to understand when we're looking at how much they're paid, mm -hmm. how much time they're putting in currently and how much time they think they should be putting in or what's ideal, because so there might we, be a difference. I assume we'd want a common measure for that, like an, an estimate of hours per week, for instance. Um, otherwise, who knows what, right? We might get a variety of responses where it's gonna be a little harder to compare apples to apples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that could be a multiple choice of like zero to 20, 20 to 40, 40 plus per week. Yeah. yeah, I don't, having never been in that position, are there people who have a better understanding of what that breakdown might look like? Is that it, what just, what Felicia said, is that a good breakdown or should it be more like zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20? I, I don't know, to be honest. I would say zero to 20, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. I mean, so break it down by 10 hours each. Yeah. Yeah. And even, and even five would be interesting to see. I mean, I, I 50 hours. Being, being, being my job, part of my job, my day job working with city councils across the Commonwealth, the amount of, Counselors that have stated that, oh, I, you know, I do two hours a week, <laughs> nonchalant in saying that, I, I would love to hear that answer. Oh, you mean? Oh, I'm sorry. So you want to see a zero to five in addition? Yeah, zero to five, five to ten, ten to fifteen. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. You would be sur You, I, you would be surprised. Okay. <laughs> it, do we want a forty plus or not? Is there anything to be gained from that information? I don't want to gather information we're not going to use. I don't think 40 plus. 
Okay. They should re they should resign if they're doing forty plus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the 40 plus might be relevant for like the mayor position. That's that's true. Because I can assume that the mayor works more than 40 hours, oh, yeah. whether or not well, they participate. I mean, but with all fairness, every single job that you are expecting to do well, you were way more than 40 hours a week. Any job, teacher, whatever it is, right? So I, I would just say that. Because at the same time, you know, in the same in the same way how the mayor is doing all these activities, the public is expecting the city councilors to show up to those activities, or the, those events or ceremonies, and we ha we haven't talked about that. You know, the, the the if you start dividing the amount of hours that the city councilors are working because they are expected to show up to things, they ended up getting like four dollars uh, an hour. Yeah. So say 40 yeah. plus, we should have that in there. So 40 plus. Okay. Yeah. I, I do want to acknowledge that we're at 630. Yeah. Um, is, is there anything else on the questionnaire? Any other discussion around the questionnaire at this point? Does education matter as a question? Hmm. In the demographic section? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. I, I was gonna, I, I was going to suggest, and we can do this next meeting if you want. That we actually ask these the the people who served if they're aware that that we went through this process in 2014 and what the results were. Hmm. But uh, I'm not married to that. Well, no, but what kind? Of, well, um it's always good to think about what kind of information we get from that and how we could use it. What are, what are people thinking? I mean, people don't know that we went through a charter review a little while ago. I don't think they would know. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Well, and I also think like, what weight would it carry? Like, whether or not they knew or didn't know, like what, I don't feel like that would be the type of thing that would affect their decision to run or not run. But it is, I mean, it is an interesting question. It may, maybe it's a question that's served for one-on-one -on -one meetings if we have any, because what we haven't talked about is what would those questions look like? Now those questions might in a lot of ways repeat the ones that are here, but it might also give us an opportunity to get to have more questions. Yes, Javier. So now that you said that, somebody can in a in a one to one conversation they can say, you know what, I'm frust I'm frustrated because I thought that the first time they had this committee they were going to actually make changes. Mm. I was hopeful and I thought, well, if things change, I'm going to be able to run or I'm going to run and at this time I'm not going to be you know making any amount of money, but nothing changed. Yeah, so that's remember, something, that's yeah. something that we can get out of it. Yeah, Peter? You have to remember the last time it was recommended to eliminate the health insurance because some people were getting it and some people weren't and in, in replacement of that doubling everybody's salary. And what they elected to do is take the double the salary and keep the benefits. They cherry picked. So they, completely, they, they disregarded the recommendation of the committee. I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, I was I was blown away by that. I kind of wanted to quit at that point. What's the what's the point if you just if you make present if you present ideas and they just say, oh well, I like that one, but I'm going to keep that one because it's all my benefit. Yeah, I think. Well, when I, when we talked to some people who were participating in 2014, I think they they didn't they assumed that these would just be um, adopted automatically. They they didn't feel they were aware enough that the that the city may not adopt everything wholesale. That they could they could decide or cherry pick, as you said. Um, again, I just want to be cognizant of time and, and respectful of that. We we did talk about a couple of things uh, for next steps. So, is there anything uh, uh, anything else with the questionnaire before we move on? Sam has a question. Yeah, okay. just a response to that is it can be included in the charge, like reiterating what it says in the charter. We are an advisory board. We make recommendations. I'm hesitant to explain what happened in 2014 because I think that's open to interpretation. 
And I'm not sure how we could succinctly say, say what happened in a, in a way that's not leading or, you know, like what you say here doesn't matter <laughs> because yeah. at the end of the day, it's up to the city council. So I want, I just wonder if there's a way to like say in the introduction or the charge of the board, like what it is that this board can do, what the process is that next goes to city council that can be succinct and we could link to the report, but I worry about going down the rabbit hole of saying, here were the recommendations, here what was adopt here's what was adopted, here's what wasn't. Mm. Um, maybe there's a way to do that succinctly in a non-leading way, but that's just my concern. I'm going to assume that we're going to need to talk at a later date anyhow about what kind of questions we would want to include with talking to people so we could revisit that at that time and and give it give it the give it a little more time than we can right now. Um, okay, so that's the next step, but it's not going to be for the next meeting. I, I'm sorry, did, there was Deb. Did you have your hand up? Okay, I, maybe you were just petting the dog, <laughs> which is very cute. Um, okay, so next steps. Um, there what there was something we we put off, um, and I apologize. I don't remember what it is now for the next step. So something we were talking about at the beginning of the questionnaire and we suggested uh, putting it off. And I, does anyone remember what that was? I, I had a suggestion, but I didn't go into it yet. Okay, Sam, and then Peter. I thought Tara was gonna say something, but maybe not. And I, I think she was the one who said, let's go right to the survey because she wanted to focus on it, sorry. Tara, is there anything? No, nope. she's gone. Tara's gone. I, I'm not gone yet, but I do have to go. Oh. <laughs> I just didn't know. I just didn't know if I had to sign off or, you know, do anything before I left. Um, I think at this point with next steps, Felicia and you and Tara are going to work on the next iteration of this, um, and then you can in our next meeting, we'll have to decide. It, it, well, the other thing we're going to decide is when the next meeting is because our, because our original schedule was every two weeks and things got thrown off the last couple of weeks. Um, so I, what I'm going to say is the first thing we want to decide is when is our next meeting? I want to confirm that because we have been on a two week schedule. Do people want to meet two weeks from today, which is I think the 27th? Because so the schedule is already a little different than we had originally hoped it would be when we first set this in motion, but that's just the way of things have rolled. So 27th work for people? Or does, let me say, does the 27th not work for anybody? I may not be able to do 27th. Okay. What about the 20th? Can we just... Just bite the bullet and meet in a week? No. Would you be able to... Felicia and Tara, would you be able to have a next iteration of this for us? I think I could probably have mostly the next iteration. I mean, I made a lot of the updates as we were talking, but mm -hmm. in terms of, I mean, really, I think Tara, the only thing that we would maybe need to work on is like what we're going to say in that description and basically the email out to people. I think that's probably like the biggest thing that would that we would need to work on before the next meeting. Um, and then I also wanted to try to put this, the survey into the um, the format or the uh, provider that Javier suggested just to see. So then then, then we can, can compare and decide which one we'd rather send out. But I can have that. I mean, I can probably have those things done by the end of the week so that we have it in time for the agenda to be posted. Okay, does it, 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 that's really up to you. I think the, 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 net, the survey is something we need to get out sooner rather than later. That's not to say, but it's, I'm also wanna be aware of your time and what you can give to this. So um, I wanna be realistic. If you feel like you can get that out by the end of this week, Remember the agenda, I've, we have to get that by Thursday. It's gotta be posted by Thursday afternoon. I'm just giving you a heads up on that. Okay. But all yeah. that, it doesn't have to be finished by Thursday, right? It just has to be 
reference, right. we are yeah. going to discuss it by Thursday. Right. Uh, well, and, right. So it needs to be out so that it's public so that we would have our meeting for next Monday. And um, in terms of the, I mean, the Google Doc, like even now, like if you refresh your page, you'll be able to see the updates that I did as we talked. Oh, great. Wow. All right. So it's really just besides putting it into the other um, survey format, it would really probably just be adding a few of those questions that I just haven't done yet as we're talking and then adding that link description because, in the beginning right the description the intro description and the demographics mm -hmm. okay. that's great great that looks wonderful wonderful yeah. thank you yeah okay so is that if, if you're on board with that then we'll have our next meeting on the 20th at 5 30 um and we will uh have we will further have the workshop through this as well as the letter um the email draft, whatever you happen to have, knowing it's not done or may not be done by then, which is fine because we've got a workshop. But anyhow, um, anything else at this point? Because I think that gives us enough to work on. I have a question. Yes, Tara. After our meeting on the 20th, are we back to every other week? Uh, I would like to get the schedule back to every other week. Okay, so we would meet on the 20th and then we would meet again on the 6th. Right. Right. What do we do is so we could that under next steps would be confirming the, the schedule going forward. So, Sam, can you put that under a next step, please? And I'll take I'll take a look at that. So if you can put my name next to it, I'll just look at the calendar. Okay. Because I also want to, I want to take that calendar and, and put it against what the city is expecting of us by a certain date, too. Yeah. Sure. All right. Any other new business? I had one suggestion for next steps that I don't know what's possible time wise. Is in since we have, do we want to have an open forum, inviting people, including the public? to speak to our charge. So it would be, you know, we would invite current and elected officials, but this could be one way to both find people who perhaps didn't run because, or didn't hold office mm -hmm. and maybe compensation was a barrier and to ask the public, what, how, how would you like to weigh in on the compensation of elected officials? Well, they certainly, I mean, so we would have a deliberate public forum versus the fact that this is public and anybody in theory could attend this, right? But but instead of just making it open, what we're doing is we're going out and we're uh, we're inviting the public to attend something very specific. Correct, where the entire agenda would be us listening. Like we wouldn't have an agenda other than receiving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my gut feeling is I think it would be good to, to do something like that. Um, just to make sure that if anybody brings it up, hey, did you go to the public <laughs> to get their input? We're able to say yes. As a matter of fact, we did. Um, I, I, my guess is that we're probably a few weeks out from anything like that. Um, but we would need to start drafting what that invite would look like. Right? Okay. And so, finding a date where all of us can do it, which I know is tricky. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we can decide that we can start looking at that at the next meeting. So why don't we put that for the next meeting on the agenda, if you could, is to, to look at those dates. So if you can include that with um, looking at all of the dates and then maybe figuring out a date for that particular event, that'd be great. And then, and then we can also discuss uh, who can take a look at that at the next, because that next meeting on the 20th, we'll do that as well. Okay. All right. What other new business before we adjourn? All right. Um, Over anyone, to adjourn. Yes. Thank you, Peter. Anyone second it? Uh, I'll second it. It looks nope. like nope. Javier nope. has a question. No, no, no. Oh, Javier, sorry, I missed you. I, I can only see so many. So, Felicia, did you get the? I sent two things now. I sent the. So I screenshot because there was no better way to do the demographic questions. So I screenshot it. So you should gotten an email with that. Uh, with the demographic questions, 
And I also, I send you a separated email for the suggested language for the header. Mm, I'm not seeing it. Um, check my spam. So it's felicia.corvelli at yahoo.com? Uh, yeah, it's just my first dot last name at yahoo.com. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing it. So I don't know if maybe it was. I, I got them bouncing back. Can you, can you write your email on the Zoom chat so I can just copy paste it from there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this also something that the two of you can handle offline? Uh, I prefer not to do it because I don't want to violate anything working in a document outside the meeting. Okay. So, um, so, okay, perfect. I will send it now. Okay, Thank you took you. a screen grab? I did. I could tell, I, I know that sound. All right, um, all right, any other new business? All right, we had the motion to adjourn, which Peter put forward. And uh, I, I second it. Sam second it, excellent. Sam, you wanna roll call us through, please? I will. Uh, I'm gonna go the other way alphabetically. Peter. Yes. Javier. Yes. Uh, Sam says yes. Deb. Yes. Felicia. Yes. Tara. Yes. And John. Yes. All right. All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks for giving an extra 15 minutes um, and have a really good night and we'll see you in a week. Yeah.